Hello and good evening, Mark. Uh, thank you for joining me tonight. Um, I'm, I'm really happy to have you because, uh, you know, I, I stumbled across your... Uh, anyway, we, we do this later. Um, can you please introduce yourself and um, say who you are, what you're doing, and uh, maybe a little bit about your musical backstory, you know, where you're coming from music-wise? So uh, my name is Mark Lawrence. I'm in a band called Broken Links. We're from the Southampton area of the UK. I always say Southampton because if I tell you where I'm really from, no one's ever heard of it, but it's called Eastleigh and they've got an <laughs> airport. Yeah, right? never heard but of it. It's not called Eastleigh Airport. It's called Southampton Airport because there's already an Eastleigh Airport in Kenya. So you can't have two airports named the same thing. So oh, there yeah. you have it. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, I'm sitting in my conservatory in my house, which is a new house, which I've just moved into. And it's really nice to have a conservatory. So I'm uh, quite nice and relaxed in there. Band wise, uh, we've just released our third album, Conflict States, uh, which we've taken a long time to work on. But we can talk about that a bit more later. But yeah, it's been a long time in the making. Um, and we've gone through a lot of uh, it's been quite a painful uh, revealing process to make that album but yeah we, that got released at the end of April and we've come up with a bizarre idea of having a music video for almost every single song on the album so we're slowly going through each of each of the songs and making a DIY video for each and they're all a bit off the wall and crackers and we've just released one for the song Cold War last Friday which is uh, sort of modeled on 1980s action movies mm -hmm. but I without the budget i, I yeah. saw it <laughs> yeah uh, if you've seen commando then yeah you'll definitely know where we're coming from with that one uh but yeah without the budget and we've made it ourselves so it's very diy and it's a little bit crap you know and it's meant to be <laughs> so yeah that's where we're at with the band right now and we're now that's been released, we'll be looking at doing the next music video, which is, they're all being filmed now. It's just a case of editing them all up. So in the next couple of weeks, we'll probably release a, a video for the track Fatalism, uh, which is uh, uh, going to be an interesting video because we got thrown out of our, and banned from our local shopping mall whilst mm -hmm. um, filming that. Yeah, we're, we're, we're considering how old we are, we should know better. But we don't. We like messing around. Um, so our musical background. Um, we all well, so we all come from Eastleigh. We've all grown up in the same area, and we all went to the same school, but we're all different ages. Um, and I was in the uh, probably about I'm probably about two to three years older than the rest of the band. Um, so I remember being at school, just messing around with cover bands and whatnot. And I used to be massively into Metallica back then. And um, my brother used to get me into other bands. So I, I used to be heavily into the Britpop stuff to begin with, o Oasis and Pulp and that sort of thing. You know, I was, I was 13, 14 at the time. Um, and, then, and then I got my, one of my friends got me into Metallica. Um, and that's when I and that's when my brother started taking the interest. He was like, "Oh yeah, all right. he's much older than me," and he used to play guitar and bands and things like that. And that's when he says, "Oh, if you're into Metallica, take this guitar, see what you see if you get on with it." And that's when I started playing around. It was only an acoustic guitar, you know, dodgy old strings on it. You know, I think I cut myself with on the rusty old strings a few times at the beginning. Uh, but yeah, I was playing around, got the guitar tab book for Load, Metallica, which was the album out at that time. That's when my brother started pushing like Rage Against the Machine onto me, lending me CDs. And he was like, listen to that. Um, and then listen to, I don't know, Tool's latest album then. And then he gave me Nine Inch Nails' his album. And I started, you know, look, diving into their back catalogues. And also I had MTV at the time. And back then MTV was quite good. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like I, still I playing remember Nirvana. the days. I remember the days long time ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, long time ago now. But yeah, they used to play uh, the patch mode ultra was coming out, so they were doing the premiere of Battle of a Gun and things like that. So I was soaking up all this sort of music when I was growing up. 
and then um I got massively into Radiohead as well. It's basically I was you, you just sort of um, start listening to all the bands that are, you know, playing Glastonbury and all the big festivals at the time, diving into their back catalogues because you pick them up halfway through their careers, um, and that's when you start listening to older bands as well. You're building up your sort of, you know, your discography of music you like in your in your mind, and then I. And then I went to university and I come back and I joined a band that was sort of, um, I, I was lead guitar in a band um, that was playing sort of um, clash, jam, Arctic Monkeys type type of thing. And uh, that wasn't really the main thing I was into. So I sort of uh, brought an extra edge to that band by adding crazy guitar solos of loads of effects. And I used to, I don't know if you know of a Digitech Whammy, pedal uh, it's yes. a nice, yeah i know yes yeah, the ferrari red pedal which basically changes the pitch of the guitar i used to use that for for fun um in that band and it was just sort of like oh yeah we'll watch this you know it's sort of like a an indie kind of mod band but with crazy guitars and effects but um yeah well, i did that for about two years and then that band um uh, come to an end sadly and then um I'd already been writing songs eh, uh, like behind the scenes, but sort of like dark, um, nine inch nailsy sort of things. Um, and I really wanted to see what I could do with those really. And then my mate, um, we were out down the pub and he goes, oh, my brother's just come back from university. He's in the air and he plays drums. And I knew it. I remember him from school, a couple of years below me. But we ended up meeting up, having a jam, playing these songs, which I sort of written. And it sounded quite good. And then he said, well, why don't I bring along my mate, Louis? He plays bass, did that. And he uh, learned all the tracks, like note for note, absolutely note for note. He learned about six or seven songs ready for the first band practice. And he learned everything note for note. So, you know. That's dedication. Uh, it, That's dedication. Yeah, dedication. Yeah, yeah. You're in the band, mate. There mm -hmm. you go. You're in. Uh, round of applause. And then uh, we spent the rest of uh, 2008 because we're quite. We've been around for quite a while now. We're quite old, and we spent most of 2008 practicing, trying to make, you know, make our set. You know, we didn't want to play live and just play a set full of mistakes. But also we wanted to concentrate on, we didn't want to sound tacky live. So the way to do that is obviously through practice, but we tried to make the bass sound massive. Mm -hmm. So we ended up having two, a two amplifiers set up for the bass. So you could have um, the normal, you know, the normal bass tone clean. Uh, um, and, providing and, all the and sub. one with some effects on it or something. So that, uh, ah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, all... Yeah, mm. all the effects come out of the other one. So if it's distortion, mm. delay, um, and then the guitars were just so I just filled it up with as much delay as possible, basically, and mm. added a few delay effects that may, actually made it like two guitars being on stage. So, yeah, we did that. End of 2009, we played our first gig in Southampton. And yeah, it just, yeah, it's just been a growing experience since then. Um, our live shows always evolved and we're quite because well i'm a software engineer during the day so i'm quite a geek um so i'm always i used to have a massive pedal board mm -hmm. like huge huge <laughs> thing it goes off the screen we're, we're talking and i'm putting taking my hands off the screen trying to make a you know a box size with them just trying to you know replicate to scale how big it is but it's so big it goes off the screen and uh i had trouble when we were playing live to actually change the effects from one song to another, because we'd have like a, you know, the guitars playing clean with some delay. And then all of a sudden it's big distortion with a phaser and some mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. crazy effect. And I'd be like, you know, I'd look like a tap dancer on stage. So we, you know, you know, bit by bit, we sort of like throw away the pedal board. And in, in the end, we ended up getting a studio rack system with, amp simulation on it and then we went the same direction with the bass as well um and then of course we started using synthesizers in our sound after well with the first ep we 
did ourselves at home. Um, and then the second EP, we went to a local studio and that's when we started playing around with synth sounds and we didn't really like doing it because how can you do it live without having an extra member? Mm -hmm. And then, or, a um, back, or a backing track. Exactly, yeah. And that's when the studio guy said, backing track, and we were like, oh, oh, they got a bad rep. And he goes, mm -hmm. look, everybody <clears throat> does it. You know, everybody does it. As long as you're not sticking everything on it, you know, the vocals are live, the guitars are live, the bass are live, and the drums are live. <laughs> um, there's no shame in it. And that's what we ended up doing. We, we use a backing track now, but only for synth lines and for some light guitar rhythm parts mm -hmm. just to make it sound a bit bigger on that on stage um so yeah we've had, yeah we've gone through a lot of equipment and we think we've well we've reached the point now where we've got more or less a really solid live setup but um, we've had a couple of calamities along the way we've even done it where we didn't have a backing track in the ears we had it where the drummer would have an ipod Mm -hmm. um, he'd have the backing track on there and only he would have the click in his ear and then he'd have to tap the drumsticks to bring us in I don't know, does that make sense? But um, Yep, I, I know, I know, yeah. I know Okay, but um, yeah. it, it didn't really work I, I guess because uh, you're, you're missing the whole uh, thing um, yeah, I, you know, I, I talk with a lot of bands and um, there, there is the ones with the backing tracks, there are ones without them, and you know, this is kind of. I, I think um, w one of the musicians said it quite nicely um, music is, is not a, a competition. It's just, you know, you should present it the best way you can. And if you have a backing track and it's not boring that you just, you know, hit play and then, you know, mime everything else, then I'm absolutely fine with it. You know, it's just. Um, The performance aspect is, uh, I, you know, I have so many things in my head what, what I want to say at the same time because, like, for me, you, you, um, you, you are like like muse, you know, and and they are also, you know, they have backing tracks and and stuff because it's 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 so grandeur uh, the the music and um, but we're still playing it live and you can still feel the energy live and you know so there is no. Um, in music, there is no right or wrong. You know, it's just what you do and what you don't do and what you like and what you don't like. And um, I don't think you will be a person who, like, you know, makes click and then just, you know, pretends pretends to play along because you, you wouldn't kind of look in, you know, in the mirror, you, being able to look in the mirror anymore because, you know, it's so fake, uh, like you see in these... Um, I don't know, uh, maybe not anymore. I don't watch TV anymore, but in the TV shows, you know, when there are bands playing and there you, you can clearly see it's all mimed and stuff. And uh, and this is not live, you know, this is this mm -hmm. will kill the vibe. Um, this will kill the connection to the people. So, yeah, anyway, sorry, uh, I'm already getting ahead a little bit, but um, um, uh, yeah, that's but, exactly it, though. But 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 just to add, For anyone who does see us live, you'll instantly know that we're not miming because it's full of mistakes always. <laughs> and and also, you know, I mean, what 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 is really, um, I have to admit, you know, for me, I also swung back f full circle because I was fully against, you know, I I, I start I play a little bit bass as well, so um, you know, I started in a normal analog band and you know, electric, uh, blah blah blah. This is all fake. You know, you have to play it. You have to to produce the music, and and then I became the absolute opposite. Like, oh, I was fully into dark wave and stuff, and you know, there's only uh, pre-recorded things and stuff, and you only sing live basically to it. And and now I'm kind of like, whatever floats your boat, you know, whatever is best for the music. And I, I guess um, this is where I, I hope <laughs> we agree. This is you know, if it suits the song. Then you know, do it. You know, when when you need the backing track for the song to make it um, as perfect as possible, then do it. If you don't need it, you know, you're a free piece. You can make a song without anything and and still make a great song. You know, um, for me, this is always um, the how how to judge a good song is kind of if you strip away everything, what's you know the echo and the effects and stuff, and it's still 
is a good song and you can play it on your acoustic guitar and it still mesmerizes you and there, you know, there's more than just the notes in it and you, you can feel it, there is a, a transcendent quality, you know, then it is a really good song. And then you can, uh, you know, you, you talked about um, Metallica, they did some of their songs with uh, orchestra and stuff and, and they work and it's, it's grand and big, but you still can take it away a lot and, and, and just play it with an acoustic guitar and this still would work, you know? And this mm. is, you, you know, I think we are, we are on the same page here. It, it's kind of like you want to present it, but um, in, in the, the, the bass needs to be a good song because then you can polish a turd, you know, you can, and it will sound great, but as, as, as soon, you know, it will fall flat uh, if, all the effects are gone and, and you're not, you know, uh, having some paid dancers to kind of uh, uh, gloss over the fact that it's not a good song, but this is not you. Um, yeah, so... Thank God. Uh, <laughs> let me, yeah, thank God. Um, I, I wanted to say, uh, but, but, you know, it was nice that you uh, started so, so well. Um, I really think, uh, I mean, I'm really happy that, that I found you because... Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a radio DJ and I get a lot of songs sent to me and, and a lot of them fright, you know, uh, inspired by Muse and this and that. And like, mm -hmm, you know, I'm kind of like, okay, let's listen. And then it's like, okay, whatever. And with you, it's the rare thing where it's really like you can hear what, what you just said, you know, Nine Inch Nails and, uh, and, and, and Pulp and Radiohead and stuff. You can hear the influences and it's not just like you know uh, uh throwing out big names and oh this is what inspires us and so you can he really hear it in the music and this is uh this is meant as a compliment um you make you you don't you not only talk the talk you walk the walk you know i mean it's really the truth um when you compare yourself to to these uh you know big acts and stuff but um, yeah, that's for me was really, really nice because I get a lot of stuff and it's kind of like, oh, we sound like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then it's like, ah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I see the aspiration, but yeah, and, and you you do really great music. I'm, a, I'm, I'm kind of uh, annoyed that, uh, that you are so small in, in a way, you know, I mean, I, that's, that's why we're talking. I want to get you out there and, and and make you a little bit better well known and and you know and push your agenda a little bit because this is really good music um so thank you thank you for that thank you for making the good music you're doing no thank you for listening thank you for taking the time to listen to it because um although you've said those nice words some people don't really <laughs> and it was only yeah yeah because I know, I know exactly what marketing you're talking about because uh, obviously we do our own marketing uh, mm -hmm. uh, and we're not marketers. So um, we have to try and get people's attention straight away by reeling off some bands which they like. And then obviously, we're, let's say we're on Facebook doing this. Mm -hmm. So we, we've got to say, I'm a massive Depeche Mode fan. Obviously not the first out. We, we, not more the later stuff than the first album. Um, Nine Inch Nails, Placebo, Muse, uh, just, it's, just, it's just an endless list, but we can't put them all. So I just say four fans of the Patch Mode, Placebo, Nine Inch Nails band are dark electro rock with a harder edge, right? But I think the only fact which I'm providing with them there is that we're electro rock with a harder edge, whereas I'm saying for fans of a long list of bands which are very they're similar but they're all different and a lot of people get a bit irked that we show up on their facebook homepage, and then they say <laughs> you sound nothing like depeche mode if anything you're a pound shop nine inch nails <laughs> and um mm -hmm. i can't believe i'm wasting my time <laughs> listening to you so there are some people that don't like us and that's fine, you know, but it, it's really nice to hear from you that you do. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know, this is, this is my, um, my privilege I have here, you know, I, 
this is my hobby. You know, I only talk with people where I like the music, you know, because nobody sends me, I, I you know, there is no label or whatever behind me that kind of says, oh, you talk with these guys, make an uh, interview or a talk or whatever. You know, I'm, I'm kind of specifically going for, for um, when, I, when I like something, when I'm, oh, oh, this is interesting. And then I look a little bit more and then, you know, and then I, oh, I would like to get to know these, uh, these persons behind the music. And so, um, you know, this is, if, if it <laughs> is anything for you, I chose you specifically because I like you. You know, I only talk uh, with, with people that I like the music. So um, that's, that's my privilege. And um, also with what you just said, in a way, um, you can also flip it around because it's better to be disliked for the music you do than be liked by everyone. I mean, you're not you're not mainstream, that's for sure, you know. But this also means you have this edge you're talking about, because if you if you want to do, you know, a going after trends and TikTok and blah blah blah, you know, and, and do exactly what everyone else does and that's popular right now, you're woof, you're gone in in a in an instant, in a few seconds, you know, the, you, you know, fame today is very brittle and just vanishes in no time. So um, for me, you're doing exactly the right thing because you're doing the music you love and you stick to your guns and you, you do. I mean, I get it. Of course, marketing wise and promotion wise, it's a little bit harder because you're you're an alg for me it's perfect you're an algam algamation is it right but algamation say, yeah yeah it's, I, I try to use big words because you know <laughs> to, to show off no, that, a was, bit. A re that was a really nice word i like that <laughs> yeah no you, uh, uh, you know a, a mesh meshing up of of different styles and you know for me the good thing is i like all of them i'm a big deepish mode fan i'm a nine inch nails fan i'm a muse fan so you know for me you're the embodiment of yes this is what I want. You know, you're all this rolled in one. So, um, but, you know, I know this is me and not everyone likes the same music as me. And this is fine because um, I see it like this. If you, if you, uh, get, um, if you uh, cater to everyone, you cater to no one, you know. So it's better to have a, a dedicated fan base who love what you're doing than to be just like, you know, flimsy. Oh, yeah, this is in right now. And, you know, in, in 10 seconds, you're gone again because, you know, when the next one comes around and the next one. And so um, my 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 saying with so many words is Boss, just can you hear me? yes, I can hear you. Stick to your guns. Oh yeah, we're we're back. We might yeah, have um, maybe the the internet cable in in the canal uh, was just you know there was a whale sitting on it or something. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> <laughs> what happened, but yeah, I uh, I I can hear you. You you can hear me as well. I'm, I'm... No, I can. Yeah, okay, yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah. So um, honestly. I know I should I should be better with this whole marketing and promotion stuff, but I cannot give you any hints. The only thing I can do, of course, I can put you in my playlist, and you are in my in my Spotify playlist, and I will play you on my on my radio show, you know. So uh, and then I will also talk, you know, tell them about the talk, and then they can find you because I link uh, stuff in. So I mean, I can do my little thing, you know. I'm I'm not an influencer. I'm just you know barely barely something but um i can try my little part uh, but i cannot really help you with a promo <laughs> I'm, I'm myself not really good at that no that's brilliant it's brilliant uh just supporting us is brilliant tobias we love it yeah so um let's maybe talk about um i i liked that you that you said um you're doing a video for every song because uh you know i as you know, I talked with other, and they, they did the same, you know, other bands and doing, and I was like, oh, but then, you know, they, they don't look so good. But Way told me, and you're doing it exactly right, that, you know, some people really use YouTube as their main uh, source for music. So having something there and maybe even some visually nice stuff, um, I know you're on a budget, um, it's, it's even better, you know. Uh, so, so this is absolutely right, but now I'm coming to the to the Cold War video because I, I've seen it, <laughs> and you know I'm coming from a place of love. I, I like the music is great, and I like 
the funny part of it, you know, of course, I know Commando and, you know, the, the chain mail stuff and then Dr. What was it? Dr. Evil and Dr. Uh, Robotnik, uh, you know, in, yeah, in from it. Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, exactly. From Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, yeah. And in ich, I, maybe let's talk about how, how this came to pass, because in a way, I think it's really cool because it shows, you know, you you have a sense of humor. You don't take yourself too seriously and stuff. But um, at the same time, I'm me personally, I always would be a little bit cautious with that because, um, you know, it can um, I mean, this one you you, you did you end up to 11, you know, to be on the ha ha side. But um, I always see the, the, the problem with that people might not take you so seriously anymore. And, um, you know, this is maybe the question to you now. Um, how do you decide to do it? And um, do you think it will help your cause? Or, I mean, I mean, you did it now and it's out there so people can find and should find it. Uh, I will link to it also in, in, in our video. Um, and I like the concept, but it's a little bit... My problem, what I have is you have um, your your themes are very, you know, um, social. I mean, Cold War. And, and I think uh, uh, what, what, what is your, your latest um, album called? Um, Conflict States. Yeah, uh, Conflict States. I, you know, I understand. It, yeah, anyway, yeah, you, you get my, you saying, get my um, point. Maybe explain yourself a little bit now. Yeah, I, I understand what you mean. You bas you're basically saying um, Our album is quite dark and it tackles some quite um, uh, tricky subjects, provocative mm -hmm. subjects, maybe. So we're quite, we're coming across as a serious band, dark, <laughs> yes. serious band. And then you see and the video. We, yeah, then we've got, gone and done this stupid video. Yeah. I, I wouldn't <laughs> say it's stupid, but it's, it's in, in a way, you know, you, you're, you're doing something right because you... You did something very unexpected for me because I wouldn't have, you know, after listening to just your music and then seeing, I would have not expected this at all. So in, in a way, it's good. You kind of uh, completely thwarted, or is it the right word? Uh, get, kind of uh, got me in the wrong direction. I thought, you know, it would be misery and blood and uh, fire and, you know, and, and then, ah, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a goofy little skit. Um, so, but, but I just don't know, I'm, yeah, anyway, maybe explain yourself and then I, because I haven't really, if, if I think it's, it's, I mean, time will tell if it was a good strategy or not, but I mean, you did what you did and you have absolutely the freedom to do that. It's just a little bit, huh, if, if people see this, you know, if people don't know your, your back catalog and, and your, your stuff and see this as the first time. We might misread you. That's maybe my my point here. Um, yeah, um, I guess we didn't think about it that much mm. um, because because the the the, the thing with us is um, I'm a bit of a daft person. Um, I'm always cracking jokes, and even when we're live. There's an element of not taking ourselves too seriously. Uh, we talk with the crowd. We're not ones to go up there and put on a really... We go up there and we've hired um, lighting guys to come in. And they've said, what do you want it to look like tonight? And we'll say, make it look like a bloody war. Yeah. So, so there's like lights going off. There's flashbangs. There's ice, dry ice everywhere in the room. And then uh, when we're... In between songs, we'll talk and riff with the crowd. You know, we'll actually talk to them. So it feels like you're, yeah, you might be in a comedy club some sometimes, I guess. But um, that we have that sort of connection live with our crowd. It's we're not the sort of band that are going to go in and try and create a really dark atmosphere to match our music, um, because at the end of the day, it is music. It's only music. Um, it's the music we like. Um, it's the music we want to make. And we're just being ourselves. And if we've got jokey, you know, a jokey, you know, um, 
personality about us, then that's there as well. So it's hard to be very jokey in your actual music unless you're, you know, adding farts and things like that yeah. and kazoos and don't, don't weird instruments. Yeah, and no. uh, we've got no interest in that. But to create visual compelling art, sometimes we have done weird stuff. And at the end of the day, we're a band and we're allowed to play with that sort of thing. Absolutely. Uh, so, um, and it's only because, um, you know, it's, it, we, it, making a video, we've done a couple of videos now. We've uh, obviously with the first album, we did three or four. And there's something I can't quite stand. But being in a band so long that we have done, we, we've, uh, I mean, wow. Uh, I'm crossing off in tangents here on why the the album is the way it is and why we went down a completely DIY route. But part of it is I got so cheesed off of everything being so serious about being in a band. Like you have to have management, you have to get people to come to your gigs. You have to do this. You have to do this. Mm -hmm. You have to pay X amount to go to a studio. You have to pay X amount for some, video producer to make your album uh you'll make your music videos you then have to pay thousands for pr and i got quite pissed off with it all um and you know it even it see it even you know even venues are starting to yeah pay to play become so busy mm. yeah it's it's yeah yeah it can even get worse than that sometimes um and you know, it's all very much like that. And it's just, we've just said, you know, without swearing too much, it's just like, sod yeah, it. You can We're swear on my exactly. program. Don't, don't, don't talk oh. about drugs. YouTube doesn't like drugs, but swearing is fine. You can fucking swear. Right. Or, or you are bloody, right. bloody swearing. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, we just thought, fuck it. We're just going to do exactly what we want now. And that is, we're going to make a really fucking hard album with, you know, we're, we're going to, we've always tried to keep the distortion down, even though we didn't want to, you know, in order to make our music a bit more palatable. And this time I've just said, no, it's going up to exactly where we want it. And, um, you know, and it's like, uh, it's the same thing. We've gone totally DIY with the album. I've completely mixed it and mastered it myself. We've completely produced it ourselves at home. Um, and we're doing the same thing with the videos and when we're left to our own devices and we've got to come up with ideas for a music video, which we can shoot on an iPhone <laughs> with, with zero budget, mm -hmm. we, we, you know, we, we are going to resort to silly boys humor, I think. Um, and, you know, we did that one for pioneers, which you might've seen, and it was, um, using a lot of stock footage. So that was quite a, a normal-ish video. Um, then we had, did the video for replicas. Um, and, you know, we're trying to do things that suit the music and suit the theme that's within the music, but obviously not too much um, if it doesn't suit it. Um, so for replicas, we just had that idea of being us being chased around by clone-like creatures, even though it was just like, you know, whichever band member wasn't yeah, yeah, in the exactly. shot. Yeah, exactly. Who wasn't in the shot <laughs> was, was the guy. Yeah, I, I got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and whoever else was on there was wearing a sock and a mask on their head. Um, you know, you can, you, you know, we managed to do that. And then for Cold War, it's like, what the hell can you do for that? You know, it's, uh, we've got this sort of military music, you know, and it's, uh, what can you do? And I do tend to think in wild tangents and I did come up with this idea of, uh, yeah, us having a laser tag battle. Mm -hmm. um, there was probably something else going on. I can't remember what else. Oh yeah. With replicas. I mean, even with that one, I, I was coming up with other ideas of like, I wanted the band members to go about their lives during the day, but every, everyone they interacted with was a mannequin. So we ended up buying some mannequins, but then, I realized we needed about another 40 mannequins to make it feasible. And we didn't have the budget, but we had three mannequins. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, the, the, 
that replicas ended up being a bit of a weird video. But yeah, Cold War, it's just sort of, it sounds a bit like a battle. Um, and it's sort of like, well, okay, we can't do just do a, a play laser war for three and a half minutes. So what else can we do? Well, let's just have some sort of training section where they talk about their war. Um, then they'll have the war. And then um, I had it in my mind, how can we change it at the end to suit the music so it goes a little bit wild at the end? And then, um, you know, I just resorted to bulk standard childish gore. Uh, um, and the, the, the rest of the band didn't even know it was coming up until filming day. And then I just pulled out the fake blood and I said, let's do this and see how it turns out. But yeah, we didn't really think about what people would think of it because part of the whole ethos of the, the album is fuck it we don't care really anymore mm. see see and this, so, is, this is this is the reason why we talk because um you know when when i you know what i usually have first is is an album cover and and the songs you know so i hear the songs and the songs are great um that's why we're talking and then i get into a little bit more and then i want to find out more And then I saw the videos, and it was a kind of like there was such a dissonance uh, here, and uh, um, and that's why we are talking because now you you have explained where it comes from, and I'm completely with you, you know, um, because I was I was actually shocked. Um, sorry, I, I know I'm talking with you, but I talked with one of a of a bigger guys uh, from our I don't know if you know Mortis. Uh, um, anyway, he of he's. This. Mortis, yeah. he's been around for over 30 years and, and he told me in our talk that even though he makes music for so long, he cannot live from it. He has a normal job and he does it on the side and he did like, I don't know, 40, 50 tours uh, through the United States and stuff. I mean, you know, he's been around for a long time. And so I'm completely was like, okay, you know, if this guy cannot do it, uh, you know, live from it. So what the heck this means be as free as you want and this is you know going back to you now so you're doing exactly the right thing fuck it do what you want in a way you want it because i mean the only thing you can sustain yourself is in having fun with it and you know um it's it's a great hobby it's so cool i'm pretty sure you can attest to that to be um, on stage and, and having the energy of, of a people, of a crowd, you know, and, and, and being there and, and you know, uh, living this. And, and then, you, you know, and the good thing is for you, you're absolutely free to do whatever you want to do, you know, because then um, the, the problem is if you're with, signed with a label and stuff and they kind of have expectations and then we think, okay, we have a promotional strategy. It needs to be garnered to, to these people and, you know, uh, okay, you don't do that and don't, you know, only talk with this, you know, then you're doing it exactly right in doing whatever you want. So this is so now I understand it, you know, and I could clearly see, you know, don't get me wrong. I could clearly see that you had a lot of fun with it, but it was such um, such a strange, you know, I would have just not thought about it. I was like, oh, he has a chainmail. He looks like Bennett. Oh, he is. Be oh, what is going on? Uh, eh? And then it kind of derailed and uh, uh, but in a good way, you know, um, I, I'm just the good thing is maybe also with this um you don't have to think about it you know because if it's uh you, as you ha don't have a label or a promotional agency you know nobody tells you oh this is not uh, suitable for this and that and this is not for this and that you just do as you feel and this i think you know to spin it in a, in a positive way this is the best creative way you can have because there is no boundaries there's just oh i like it and i'm not like well, you know let's let's do it and we had only three mannequins so we had to make do with them and you know sometimes uh, limitations also is a, is a good um breeding ground for for creativity so um anyway uh, I, i get it now and and i think now it's even more endearing to see what you have done you know uh bec because it's 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 in a way really nice, um, like a like a fresh uh, um, air thing that um, 
you didn't even think about it much. It was just like, oh, let's do something fun. And and you did. You, you know, this is this is more authentic. Everyone, you know, of these stars and starlets, we want to be authentic and we want to, you know, uh, this is me, guys. And, you know, I always look like this. And look, look, look here. And, and you know, and, and uh, all this. And you just did what you wanted to do. And, and so... In a way, you are you're more grounded and you're more authentic than everyone else who's faking it. Let's put it this way. You know, I mean, not not everyone is faking it. Don't get me wrong, but um, yeah, no, it, it makes it, it. I understand it now. Thank you for the for the explanation and and it makes it even more fun now to to watch it. So uh, I mean, when, the, the the big the big thing when you do these things is uh, Phil and Louis. They they. they <laughs> They, uh, they, they, they expect this of me, this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I force, I don't force them to do it, but um, Phil is a, Phil, Phil, I feel Phil would admit that he's, he's not got a, a, an ounce of acting DNA in him whatsoever. So one of the best things about making this video is, you know, we all have to try and try our best. And, you know, it's trying to eke it out, trying to make it look as funny as possible, you know, and it's just, um, yeah, it's just fun doing that, you know, it's, um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, and, 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 you know, yeah, don't, it's don't, fun to do. don't, don't uh, underestimate that. Uh, it's also cool that, I mean, you are. I can clearly hear this now. Um, you're kind of a band leader, you know. You, uh, like you said, we, we didn't even know what to expect from the video, so you kind of had it in your head and just, you know, uh, you do this and you do that and stuff. So, um, but this is also a good thing because it shows that we trust you, you know, um, because we obviously didn't say no. I don't know if you had to pummel them into submission. I don't think so. It didn't look like we had any bruises or something, uh, which we are not fake. Um, so uh, I see this as a, as a good thing. You know, you, you have a good thing going on here. You have three people who kind of have the same goal and, and trust each other. This is a, a very important thing as well, you know, that you, um, because, um, you know, I dabbled in music as well. So I know how tough it is to really find people who you can trust and who have the same vision and, and the same drive to do things. So um, you can consider yourself quite lucky. And I'm, I'm happy that you are lucky because this gives us the music where I'm really happy that that it exists. And now with a video, I'm also happy about it. I will watch it again. And, and then, you know, it will be even more fun to know um, some some stuff behind it. Um, I, will, I will say that the next music video is going to be equally as comedic, um, but with okay. a very serious dark element as well. But it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, just expect some some other similar ones <laughs> expect for unexpected or, or like another a british troop says uh, nobody expects the spanish inquisition right so <laughs> no but but you see this is so this is so refreshing because um you didn't really think about it much and it makes it so much more um i, I would clearly hope for you that this goes viral and people will find it and stuff and and this would have nobody would have predicted that you know but um if you would have what i said earlier if you would have went with a formula what's in right now and do it as exactly you, you know you would have been buried and forgotten in in no time so um you you put on your own stamp and this is all you know all that matters uh in a way and i'm i'm really happy you did and yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch all of his stuff anyway. Um, so let me just uh, we talked about this. Yeah, okay. So um, just going through my notes here. Um, so just another question. Um, you're a free piece band, right? And um, as you have now, we talked about the backing tracks and stuff. Was there any consideration that you have like a, a keyboard player or you know a fourth member? Um, in taking this over or was it just because you three are so good with each other that you don't want it to add anyone? Um, I, th I think 
there has been a discussion about it once before, but I've never been very keen on it because I was at the band I mentioned, which I was in before, which went down the pan. That was a four piece. And there always was a problem that one, that at least one member was a problem, you know, oh, or, okay. or, or, you know, it's just, um, you organize a big gig, but one member can't do it. So you end up, you know, there's all that sort of thing. Oh, when shall we practice next week? I can't do Tuesday mm, or okay, I can't okay. do Wednesday, that sort of thing. And, um, less is more basically. Um, mm -hmm. so we've always stuck as a free piece and that's why I've not had too much of a problem with us having a laptop on stage to play the backing track because you don't have to split the money with them. Um, so yeah, not that there is any money. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically sod all. But, um, and anything that does get, um, goes into, I don't know, paying for petrol. But um, yeah, no, there's not really been anything like that. It's always just been the laptop right from the very not from the, the get-go we've always been a free piece but when we first started out it was a bit more raw a stoner rock sort of sound which morphed into what we do now um because the stoner rock thing didn't really feel authentic to us and when mm -hmm. it was really when i when we went to the second studio the studio for the second ep and i said look i've got some ideas but they got simps in them and the, the, the studio engineer just said, who cares? Add them mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. And that's when the shackles were sort of off. And mm -hmm. I was like, right, okay, I can start writing songs with synths here and there. And then before you know it, we've started got, we've got little rave elements going on in the songs here and there um, in 303s and stuff like that. So I've really been able to write whatever we want, really. But I guess... It's never going to happen, which is part of the whole fuck it ethos is that we're never going to make it and we're never going to get big. So we're just going to do exactly what we want to do mm -hmm. and enjoy it. Um, it's just like if it were to ever happen that we've got, got big, then I'd like to maybe scale that back and get rid of the laptop and have it so that there's a, you know, a couple of session music musicians on stage. Mm -hmm. But seeing that's never going to happen, it's just easier to just have a laptop. Um, but yeah. No, don't okay. know if that answers I, the question. I, I, get, I get it. You know, and also, it, it's also that's what I meant with uh, you can be uh, consider yourself quite lucky that you found these three. Uh, I mean, you are one of them, uh, the three people who are kind of, um, you know, have the same goal because it's not easy to find people who are really in the same, you know, vision wise or, you know, in, in the same mood and stuff. It's, um, you know, I myself play a little bit bass and I could play in, in, you know, there's a lot of blues bands who are looking for something, but it would never be something where I really want to be part of, you know, and just to play with somebody because, you know, it's a band or something. Um, so anyway, my point is you are lucky that you found the right persons uh, for the for the things you want to do. And if it works for you, keep it like this and, and it, it works. And, and also... I think your attitude is really, really good because you can only, this is kind of my attitude as well. It's like, um, if you don't expect much, you always get more than you expect because, you know, something always happens, you know, and, and this is, this is cool. And, um, so, so keep, keep this attitude because, um, I think that, that some people and fortunately not you kind of, uh, get sometimes wrong is that, we 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 seem like we are being entitled to something you know because we we did this and that and you know and they had you know, you're not entitled to anything you know just uh, you know connect yourself i mean this is what we're doing right now and and find people who like your stuff and who who push you a little bit and promote it and you know then things will happen and uh and so you know keep keep this attitude because whatever happens you will be happy about it you know and, and if nothing happens you had a lot of fun with your guys playing uh shows and making silly videos that's you know that's something you can show your children later on and you know oh, look what daddy did and like wow <laughs> yeah exactly is... yeah i mean i mean over the years i've heard stories of, of bands who did make it and then you just hear that they're 
you know, it's not it's not turned out for them how they expected it to. Mm -hmm. They owe a, a record label a load of money still. They don't own their songs anymore. Um, the, you know, the band all fell out, you know, for God knows what reasons and whatnot. And they, you know, went on tour, broke their leg or, or I don't know. But it's just a lot of we've managed to do what we what they have kind of done but in a much more smaller form you know mm -hmm. we we've managed to go to germany we played germany a couple of times and we cool. we're really grateful for that you know it's uh, we uh, we played we played berlin a couple of times and then a couple of random towns here and there essen and Braunschweig, mm -hmm. uh hamburg we managed to play um hamburg is a cool city and, yeah it is mm -hmm. yeah um but you know and it was it, at that time we, we were over the moon the the guys thought you know because it's from a, a another guy in another band locally he put the idea in my head that we should be trying to go to europe rather than trying to gig in the uk mm -hmm. because they would like our music more because the uk is very x factor um and they don't really look they don't really like our music basically <laughs> okay um, but, so okay, yeah, it's, yeah it's, but, weird, uh, it's weird but uh, you know but muse is also from the uk isn't it? aren't they uh, you know they are they are but we're and, a little bit more less mainstream than them mm. aren't we but okay. but yeah we tried you know we sent 100 and 150 emails out to different venues in germany and we managed to cobble together five gigs out of that and then we managed to go back uh two years running and um, i'm not sure how it's going to be possible now with all this brexit stuff and obviously hmm. germany's having the same problems as uk venues where they want to pay to play and things like that but we've managed to do that and still have a day job so we're still bringing money in in order to live our lives and mm -hmm. pay the rent and things like that whereas some people have gone the band way of doing things toured with a big major label and then they've come back and then they've got a they've got nothing to show for it so well i wouldn't say that but like it's um they're not bono basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep you know it's uh tough nope. and that's but, tough but I business think it's also you know um it keeps keeps you a little bit grounded uh you know because um it's it's you you take the good stuff and you can say oh we tour germany and you know and this was that and da 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 and we had beer there and and we found these guys and whatever um but also you know coming home and then you know being level-headed and being grounded a little bit you know when when you can enjoy it even more because what what i personally think is um you know as soon as it becomes a job and you have to do it you know all the freedom is lost because when it's kind of like uh when it's not like oh we're going to germany no it's like okay you have five dates in germany you have five dates in france you have five dates there da, 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 you know um every day uh, a different city and you know when it's kind of like it's cool you know don't get me wrong it, it's you know the dream of uh you know all aspiring rock stars or whatever but it's I'm pretty sure it's not that exciting anymore, you know, when you forget in which city you are because you, you had a nightliner and you kind of, uh, hello, uh, Hamburg, he hello, Essen, you're the greatest crowd ever, really. You know, it's kind of like, hmm. So um, anyway, I, I think, you know, this is this is also the good thing that there is um, no money behind it and or you get at least the petrol money that you can enjoy it more you know so it's it's something something special and and uh, you know now that the world wakes up again and gets out of a pause mode i'm i'm really looking forward to go to concerts again and just enjoy this and and you know cheer cheer the bands on stage and stuff and um and, and this is you know this is the highlights of of our life you know and and this is something cool to talk about and when you sit down uh, you know um With a, with a cold one with your with your bandmates and oh do you remember this was a gig and stuff while we on the subject because this is a perfect segue um as we are almost nearing the one hour mark i would like to to go to one question i always uh like to ask uh, more to the end is um as you were touring and um 
on stage or off stage or on the way to the stage? Was there any funny mishaps uh, you can share? Any any funny stories? What happened to you? I mean, keep it PG-13. That's uh, <laughs> That would be cool. Um, but besides that, you know, um, do you have any funny stories? Oh, gosh. So, so, oh, yeah. We had a question like this uh, <laughs> recently on uh, one of those uh, um, Word document interviews. And uh, we were stumped. We were stumped because we do have lots of little stories, um, which we find funny. But it's not like, oh, someone slipped up on a banana and landed in a dog turd but it's not like that sort but of then thing. give me some stories that you find funny you know i mean it's it's it, if you find them funny maybe even i as a german who who has no humor find it funny let's see let me hear it oh okay well, okay. well um oh, yeah. well one of the main biggest stories which i think goes down at us going over to germany is um, we played a place called White Trash in Berlin. Okay. And it was, a, it, was a, it was an amazing venue. We absolutely mm -hmm. loved it. We went back there twice, but it's like a Irish pub upstairs, all wooden, you know, with a really dirty diner menu. And then downstairs is like the Bat Cave. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's dark, dingy. And they have bands upstairs and downstairs. And um, we remember we checked into the hostel um, early that day and put all of our gear um, in the rooms and whatnot. And, you know, we all, all had our own separate room in the hostel. And we were thinking, this is brilliant. They're treating us really well. We've got our own separate rooms. Went along to the venue, did our sound check. <laughs> I think I know where this is going. <laughs> okay, but go ahead, please. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we went around, along to the sound check. Oh, I had, I had a king bed as well in my room. And um, yeah, we went along, along to the sound check, played our gig, and then we stayed out till about 5 a.m., you know, drinking with the sound guy and things like that. And I went, ended up going back to my room and um, I walked in, and it was pitch dark. And then there was people sleeping in my bed. It was the couple, a couple, and uh, the guy jumped out and he was wearing like a thong and, uh, and, a, uh, a, a, and an eye mask, diamond okay. encrusted eye mask. And he, was, uh, he started chasing me out chasing me out the room, calling, calling me an effing C word. Uh, yeah, and chased me right out the room. You know, like I was um, some kind of, um, I don't know, some kind of bad person. So yeah, that sort of happened once. Um, we always liked playing um, a venue in Chemnitz called Subway to Peter. Okay. And they always make you uh, do their homemade Dalek shot. Um, Ooh very interesting playing there uh we almost got uh, we, we almost we almost had to cancel a couple of dates in our tour because we like to go um sightseeing a little bit and we put our car in a german um parking lot because you guys mm -hmm. you don't have parking lots on the outside they're always underground mm -hmm. and they're always um there's a particular one that had barriers and we just took a ticket parked the car in there and then we went walking around berlin had a mixed grill and then we come back and we couldn't we got in we couldn't get back into the parking lot again it was all okay. shut it was only it didn't open on a sunday but it let cars in oh, oh, <laughs> but they, there should have been maybe another way in because uh i mean this because yeah i mean yeah okay i, I get what you're telling me but i think there should be a different way in that you can maybe with a ticket you can open a door or something because uh, this means you you cannot you i mean we we let you in but we don't let you out this should not be the way yeah no there, there was a way we, we were we were hitting the at the help button and mm -hmm. some guy didn't mm -hmm. really understand what we were trying to say and he just kept saying come back tomorrow come back tomorrow mm -hmm. but then luckily there was sort of above the um car parking lot there was like a you know a skyscraper there mm. And we saw somebody walk out. We banged on the window. Mm. And in the end, they let us into the building and you could get into the car park via that building. So okay. we managed to get get it. But, you know, there was a few hairy moments there. <laughs> um, 
Okay, but, but yeah. this is, yeah, this is this is all you know. I mean, this is exactly in the moment. It it sucks and it stinks, but when when it's a funny story afterwards, you know, and it's kind of this is this is what what life is is all about, you know, to have some some little funny stories to tell. And um, so uh, anyway, so, uh, maybe let's close with with a thing you already said that um, you're gonna that there are gonna be more videos uh, coming. Um, And what is what's the next big plan? Um, are there is is, uh, is England already open again? Can you can you play venues again, or um, is it maybe um, next year? Yeah, there's a couple. Our local venues are opening, but they're um, you know social distance gigs. Mm. So there's a couple of tables in there, but I've got some tickets booked up for a gig in June. So I think it's. I think it's something like June the 22nd, everything reopens again. Okay. So all gigs are back on um, without distancing. Um, I, don't, I imagine they might be at some sort of maximum capacity reduction. But yeah, they're reopening. So we've got our first gig booked in on the 9th of October. So we start gigging again in Southampton, our hometown, or nearabouts um, on the 9th of October. And then we've got a couple of other gigs booked up towards the end of the year, but we want to do more. Mm -hmm. But it's just very difficult being an unsigned band with no management, trying to book these gigs ourselves because um, no one basically replies to us. <laughs> mm. So we just got to keep going, keep sending emails all the time, um, trying to book gigs up. But yeah, we will try and get some gigs in Europe as well. We will try that uh, and see if anyone's interested in booking us. But uh Yeah, that's the plan. Um, and then hopefully play some festivals somewhere. That would be mm -hmm. nice. Mm. Yep, I think so too. I mean, I, for me, this is I, I I'm still a little bit astonished because you're you're quite underrated in 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 my opinion. Because uh, maybe it's because I, I get a lot of <laughs> uh, songs, you know, and I can um, there is. You're, you're you're the diamonds in all the dirt I I get, and so I, I'm really happy whenever I find a good a good band. So um, you know I I can do my little part that I told you um, with my with my radio show and with my playlist, and you know you get a few more fans maybe through that. But um, yeah, uh, I think this year in Germany it still looks a little bit bleak, but. Um, so next year it should be kind of back to normal i hope um and it would be great of course if uh you know chemnitz is not very far away from from me if you if you're gonna play there again so i can even come to a concert this would be really cool to see you guys live um doing doing what you're doing <laughs> with uh with all your stuff um even you know you don't have this big pedal board anymore like you said um yeah so uh Thank you very much for your time. It was really nice to get to know you. Uh, you wanna any closing statement for the for the millions of people out there? Um, you wanna you wanna end with? Okay, so let's stick with the ethos. Everybody, just do what you want. <laughs> There it is. There it There is. It I is. think. There yeah, just is. do what you want. You're not gonna. Uh, win any awards where well, you're not going to get any awards when you die if you haven't done that so um yeah for any other bands out there don't don't waste your time time trying to get signs and uh bowing down to anything just do what you want um and forget about being signed you don't really need it nowadays mm -hmm. you can have an existence just by doing stuff online yourself yep Exactly. No, and, and like we already talked about, and you can be free and you can do whatever you want to do. You have no overlords to, to talk to and stuff. I mean, I, I guess the only thing I would recommend if you can, um, if you can manage it or so is, you know, if you get like a, um, nah, not a promotion agency, but, you know, get, getting gigs 
uh, through you know if somebody helps you uh, getting getting you gig a booker that's that's it that's was a booking mm -hmm. agency because this is really annoying I, I'm pretty sure you know to to fry to a lot of people and I guess you have lists and you know and then you throw to them because you also should not annoy them too much and stuff so um, yeah that's yeah we've that, got a massive spreadsheet yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think so yeah and uh, most of the lines are red where they've never responded to us but mm -hmm. some <laughs> some agree but not many <laughs> mm -hmm. no but but this is uh, you know persistence is is the key I, i'm pretty sure that's you know um if that's the, the good thing and the bad thing of these times we're living in like you said the good thing is you don't need any labels and you don't need anything anymore but the bad thing is as i can tell you you know i already told you as a, as a everyone can do music today that's great that's super but everyone does and some people just you know throw together a tune on their iphone and then send it out and and you know uh, and i have to listen to it and um so <sighs> It's it's the good with the bad. That's that's what I wanted to say, and and that's why it's so hard to sift through. You know, there's only this amount of um, uh, um, nah, venues, and and they have to sift through a lot of stuff. But it's really not good. And so anyway, but keep on doing it, and and maybe make some live videos that people can see how you you know work with a crowd, and then you know uh, uh, and how you your flash bangs and your dry eyes and stuff, so you know that people can see something like that. But even this can be faked. I don't know if you uh, that's a, that's a different story. There was a story here where a guy faked that he was a big star and got booked. And there was nobody coming because he was, mm. you know, he was just faking it. Anyway, you're not faking it. Um, you're, <laughs> you do you. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, thank you for your time. It was really nice to get to know you. Um, I wish you all the best. And please, and I mean it, keep in touch. Send me whenever you have something new out. Uh, send me the stuff. I can play it in on my radio show and I can put you in my in my playlist, of course. Um, I'm, I, I'm happy to help uh, where I can in my, my little capacity. Now, thanks, Tobias. Thank you very much for um, inviting me on for the interview and thanks for all your support. It means a lot. You're very welcome. It's, it's great to hear that someone gets the music and um he had some trouble with the videos but he got the music <laughs> but yeah, we cleared yeah, this yeah. we cleared this out <laughs> okay we'll okay. keep it in mind with the videos you know i mean this is this is really i mean sorry don't i'm just one person and and we cleared <laughs> this out now you know and i'm i'm absolutely loving what you're doing what you want to do and that you don't think about it so much and this is the best thing you can do so keep on doing it it was just i, I told you this was my dissonance issue because um you know i'm 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 talking with a lot of gothic guys and stuff and and I'm I'm very happy that you don't do the the usual I don't mind it you know uh, usually there's latex and bondage and blah 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 and this and that you know and all this stuff and I like it I don't you know I don't mind it but it's kind of run of the mill it's kind of normal or usual kind of expected so in a way you you flabbergasted me you kind of surprised me completely with what you did and i was like what what is going on here and and but it's good you know now when i know yes. where, where you're coming from no it's, it's it's positive yeah. because it's not it's not you know if you would have <sighs> use stock footage from some uh, riots and and you know and and when filmed a burning tire or whatever and you were standing in front of it and and, and singing with dark eyes and looking you know grim into the camera or like that you know it would have been absolutely fine and i would have liked it but it would have been you know run of the mill like you would expect and then <laughs> you did not do that so it's it's cool. Anyway, I'm 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 in circles here now. Do what you do. It's it's cool. It's cool, and uh, I I like uh what you what you explained how how you got to this. So now let's stop it. It's cool stuff. Period. Rack in.